Let's start with silence. Silence is one of the most precious conditions for humans, because it allows us to feel the depth of our presence. This is one of the reasons why the advent of electric cars has generated lots of enthusiasm among people. For the first time, we could associate the concept of cars with the experience of silence. Cars can finally be quiet. Peace in the streets, a silent revolution in the cities. But silence can also be a problem. The absence of sound, in fact, when it comes to cars, it can be quite dangerous. Think of blind people who can't see a car which is approaching, and now if it's electric, they can't even hear it. Or think of every one of us as we are walking around the city, we are absorbed in our thoughts, and we detach from the surroundings. In these situations, sound. Can become our precious companion. Sound is one of the most wonderful gifts of our universe. Sound is emotion, and sound is sublime. And when it comes to car, sound is also information. In order to protect pedestrians and to give an acoustic feedback to the drivers, governments around the world have introduced several regulations. Which prescribe the presence of a sound for electric vehicles. In particular, they require minimum sound levels at specific frequency bands, up to the speed of 30 kilometers per hour. Besides the speed, the natural noise of the car is considered as sufficient. These regulations have generated different reaction among those who favor sounds. And those who fear the presence of too much noise in the city. However, I don't see it as the noise of the car. I rather see it as the voice of the car. And this is one of my biggest challenge and privilege at the same time. I design the voice of electric cars. We all know how a combustion engine sounds like. And we do actually also know how an electric engine sounds like. Think of the electric tramway. As soon as it moves, it creates this ascending, high-frequency pitched sound, which we call the whistling sound. However, if we would just amplify this sound, we would still not be able to fulfill the legal requirements. That's also why we need to compose a new sound. So, how do we go after it? In many cities, the traffic is already very chaotic, and we don't need more chaos. But the streets of the 21st century are a great case study, teeming with transients, cross purposes, and disarray. And this landscape offers a great opportunity for developing new solutions on how to reduce this chaos. I have conceived a new approach. That tries to reduce the chaos by introducing harmony. Since many people don't know how an electric car could sound like, I have to define first of all a new sound world, something that it doesn't belong to our previous experience, but it creates a reference for the future. Together with a small team, we create lots of sonic textures that are able to. Transmit emotion, just like a painter with colors. We are able to connect feelings and frequencies, so that whenever one is approaching a car, we can feel an emotion, which, besides fulfilling the legal requirements, speaks also about the character and the identity of the car. I call this paradigm sound genetics. With sound genetics, I define first of all an aesthetic space of sound, and at the same time, I search for new, innovative methods for generating soundscapes that we don't know. Soundscapes that allow us to envision abstract words, 
to make them tangible and audible. Sound genetics is based on three steps. The first one is the definition of a sonic organism. The second one is the description of sonic variations, and the third one is the composition of sound genes. The description of a sonic organism is based on a cluster of properties that everyone, every sound that I compose should have. I transfer to a small sound entity, such as the sound of a car, the power of the emotion of music, so that sound can move so. And just like dancer on a stage, sound will project trajectories of sound in the air. And it's not just about the sound of a car; it's the memory of my father coming back home. And sound has the power to create unexpected sense of wonders, which hypnotizes. And ultimately, sound goes beyond the human condition because it allows us to transcend. As a second step, we define the sonic variations. Just like humans, where different bodies generate different voices, also different car shapes have a different acoustic behavior, which depends on the geometry and the materials. So we have to know, first of all, how this car propagates the sound outside by means of acoustic measurements. And just like a single voice is able to produce different tones and timbres. At the same time, we produce different sonic variations within a space of eight words that I defined, and some of them are to me really important, such as the concept of visionary, of elegance, of dynamic, of embracing. And once we have defined these two aspects, we have what I call the identity prism, which is something like a sonic identity card. Of a car, and as a third step, we enter the world of the sound design, where the sound genes are composed and the new archetype is conceived. Now, let me show you another example on how I transformed a sound feel into a melody. Think that I am a violin player on stage. If I would start to play the violin, I would generate a sound field which would propagate in this hall, and at some point the sound field would hit the side walls and would be scattered all over the places, and this is how it looked like. Sometimes ago, I have captured several ways of sound to hit side walls, and last year I was asked from the Bavaria Radio Symphony Orchestra to compose ringtones that they were going to play. So one of them, I had the idea to start from this sound field. I took a section, I superimposed the section over the distribution of the musicians on stage, and then I followed the blooming of the sound field by means of three parameters: time, intensity, and frequency. Then I wrote down all this gradient for each instrument, and as you can see, for instance, the piece will start with the string section. Playing very softly, and then it's going to have a crescendo as the brasses, the woods, will jump in, and the melody will end with a an harp and a piano playing on the highest range. Let's listen how it sounded like. So this is the sound of my alarm clock, actually, in the morning. <laughs> And now let's go back to electric cars. And let's 
Listen to the first example that I had showed you. And now I would like to show you how a potential sound, based on the sound genetics for electric cars, could sound like. Cars are a metaphor of time, distance, and journey. Of setting out and returning, of anticipation and adventure, but at the same time, of intelligence and complexity, of human intuition and accomplishment, and the sound has to glorify all that. I see cars both as living creatures and as highly complex performative art installation. The sound that we envision through sound genetics allow us not only to celebrate this, com this complexity, but also to make the world a more elegant and safe space. Thank you.